God bless you. Happy New Year to all of you, brothers and sisters on TV land. And thank you so much for tuning in so that we'll be able to enjoy fellowship once more on this program, The Anointing. Thank you for inviting friends and family and tuning in. We praise God that we all made into the new year, 2015. This is an exciting year, a year of promise, a year of hope, a year of victory. And all these things born out from the word of God, the unfailing God has declared the best for his people. This year is a year of purpose and accomplishment. So let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we are thankful to you. We bless and glorify you in Jesus' name. That for the first time, it has pleased you for us to come together in the spirit of faith and the unity. Uh, in the unity of purpose, mighty God, agreeing on your word and your will, that Father God, yes, you will never fail us. You will never fail 2014 to deliver on your promise and never fail 2015. We pray as we come together for the first time this new year, 2015, may your hand rest upon us, bless this moment, and bless your people, strengthen and increase their faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and thank you for tuning in again. I'm Apostle Vincent Acosa of Christ Citadel International Church here in California. Please, if you have your word, hand it, your Bible, please let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and we'll be reading from <clears throat> verse 3, just two verses, verse 3 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3 and 15. You have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And verse 15 says, For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from the midst of the camp until they were consumed. I want to stand on this to bring a message of inspiration and encouragement to you. Especially as we begin this new year 2015. This is a fertile virgin year that God has given to bless his people. Thank God we made it by his grace. And anybody who, by God's grace, you are still alive and you are hearing me on TV land, you may not have counted yourself. There's one thing making it and one thing what? Apprehending your purpose, your vision, and your goals. And we'll be talking about that. But the point is this. Where there is life, there is always hope. You need light. Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 10 tells us, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Any of those three things of the enemy can destroy you. To steal, he can steal your joy, steal your hope, steal your vision, steal your, your dreams, steal your material things, steal health from you. You know, steal, kill, and he can also kill you. And it can also destroy you, destroy everything that you have, everything that you are, you know, um, maybe you have been able to build a business and the devil can come and destroy it. We see in the situation with Job, in one day he destroyed everything that Job has taken years to build. But in all these things, the Bible says, you know, Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And this is why I want to zero in to bring inspiration and encouragement to you. Because if you have life, there's a chance, a likelihood that the promises of God that also comes in various aspects will manifest one way or the other. It may, may not have happened 2014, but who knows what 2015 holds for you. Because the promises of God are always in the future tense. I will, I shall. And God who delivers on his promises, because he says in Jeremiah 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 12, that I'm watching over my word to perform it. So God is watching over every outstanding promise to do it. But I want to stand on this word to bring inspiration and encouragement to you. Because the point is this, our walk with God should consistently and steadily be about faith and commitment. You see, here... We see in the, in the children of Israel's world, walk into the promise. They came to a place called Kedesh Barnea. And in Kedesh Barnea, they started circumnavigating 
for 38 years. It was all because of their sinful choices that they made, that God was angry with them, and God made it that, you know, the people who rebelled against him, he wasn't going to reward sin by taking them to the promise. And it, is, it applies everywhere. Those who persistently and all repentantly, you know, rebels against God and doesn't have any contrition in their heart to repent, to seek him for forgiveness and guidance, God is not going to reward you with the blessings of God. The best of God are reserved for those who love him. That's what the Bible says, for, you know, you know <clears throat> all things work together for good for those that are called of God, but those who are called according to his purpose. So as we, we continue to walk in obedience and we show, you know, love, and understanding in this word, God will also what bless us as a result. But this indeed, though it happened some time ago to the children of Israel's advance, it can also happen to so many of us. That sometimes you come to a hump in life that you are trying to get over it and it is like you can never go. You are circumnavigating for a long time and you, maybe you are frustrated. I prayed all that I can, I've sought all that I can. The important thing is this, there is still life. In the end, God spoke and showed them the direction that they should go. So I'm believing that this year God is going to direct your steps, show you the direction that you should go. In terms of maybe you want to build a career, you want to maybe start a ministry, whatever the burden in your heart, because he himself is the one who plants those desires and delights in our hearts. Psalm 34, 37 verse 4 tells us, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But all these things is conditioned on faith. If you don't have faith, you are not going to make it. The Bible says because faith is a walk. Faith is not just a talk, it's a walk. You believe, therefore you commit yourself. You take steps, measure steady steps on the profession that you are making in Christ Jesus. So now God is saying that, you know, you are being around this place, now move northward, which means involves what? Taking steady walk on the direction that he has given. And this year is a year of abundance, still as in the days of Isaiah. When Isaiah declared in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you enjoy the best of the land, wherever you are. You are living on some land. It doesn't matter the geography, doesn't matter the country, the culture, whatever. As far as you are sitting somewhere, God says he, he will occasion you to enjoy the best of the place. But people of God, we have to what? prepare our hearts to receive the best that God has for us. This is not a time by God's grace that we have made it, that some of you we are sitting back and we, we, I wish I made it, maybe I lost this, maybe I not. No, just be steady in your faith. Because the Bible tells us in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 says, For this was how the ancients, the ancients were commanded. Abraham, all those people who live in those and Noah, and all those people, the, the, the Old Testament saints, they were commended because they did not see literally the promise. They heard the voice and they walked in compliance to the voice. And this is what I'm bringing to you. God's word is his will expressed. Again, God's word is God's perfect will expressed. So when we take the word of God and then we apply it and we take steps, we don't have to see to believe. Seeing, to, uh, seeing is believing. It's a natural way of approaching things. But God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot tangibly behold him. Therefore, we need his word to direct us. We need his word to instruct us. As we are reading right now in Deuteronomy chapter 2, the people didn't see a face. They didn't see God's mouth. They didn't see God pointing northward or showing them anything using the compass to get. They just heard a voice that came to them. You have been around this place for far too long. Now move on northward. Today God is telling you it's time for you to move on. But the point is some of us, we have, glued, we have been glued to certain situations because we cannot let go of the past. 
The reason why you are not seeing progress in your life is that you cannot let go of the past. Hello, please. Bye-bye 2014. Welcome 2015. Separate the two. They are not the same. Amen. Let 2014, whatever disappointments, whatever struggles, whatever challenges, whatever difficulties, whatever, you know, heart-wrenching experiences that you have, leave it behind. Because you are never going to encounter that year anywhere. But you move on by faith. Listen to the voice of the living God. The one who knows the way better. Because after all, we need him to direct our steps. Psalm 37, 23, the steps of the righteous, they are ordained of the Lord. Let the Lord ordain your steps this year. And he will lead you to your promises. He will lead you to expectations. He will lead you to joy. The Bible says hope does not disappoint. Romans chapter 5 verse 5, hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the Bible says, for God has shed abroad in our hearts the Holy Spirit which he has given to us. And God has given the Holy Spirit to all of us. The Holy Spirit, our companion, our accomplice, in the Greek is called the paraclete or the paracletus. God who accompanies us. We can see this in Psalm 23 better. 23 verse 3, Bible says, yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God is with us in any situation because he can never what, abandon us, turn his back on us, or refuse us help. He will be with us. Yeah, when we go through the fire, he is there. When we go through the waters, he is there. This is the, I want to bring a message of inspiration, a message of hope to you. This year, as we begin our first service, I want to dedicate this one to inspirational, inspiration and faith based on the word of God. People of God, listen. These people have been around the same spot, circumnavigating, veering around for 38 years. Maybe you are looking back. You are putting 38 years of work like the man who was sitting by the pool of Bethsaida. In John chapter 5, the cripple, the Bible says he has been there for 38 years. And Jesus walks to him and asks him, do you want to walk? And he said, well, I have nobody to help me when the water gets stirred to put me in. Jesus just said, pick up your mat and walk. 38 years, he has lost all hope. He had no expectation his own confession gives him away. It tells us that this is a man who has resigned himself to failure because he has come to understand that, well, nobody cares for me here. Nobody considers me here. I have nobody here. Maybe I'm going to sit down here and die. Maybe that is your decision. Maybe that is your conclusion. Maybe that is how much you have made up your mind. Well, I have no family. I have no money. I have nobody to help me in this condition that I find myself in. I battled this sickness for a long time. I battled this condition for a long time. And you are about to throw in the towel and to accept and embrace failure and defeat and death. God doesn't want it to happen that way. The Bible says uh, the people finally heard the voice of God. For 38 years, they didn't hear his voice directing them. As in the, 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 the man who was by the pool of Bethsaida, for 38 years, he never heard a voice of hope. He never heard a voice of, of victory. He never heard a voice of the, 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 the divine voice directing him, telling him that, well, you may not have anybody, but I'm here for you. Because sometimes we put our faith so much on men, and they end up hurting us, disappointing us, frustrating us, turning our backs on them. When you need them most, that is when they will hurt you most. But God said, give me your heart. Turn your attention to me. Let me become your Lord and your God, your be all and your end all. I hope somebody is getting a message this, this evening, and this message is coming in. People, listen to me. The people did not see anything. The heavens open for God to come down or some angel to come, just a voice. As I'm standing here, being a voice, echoing the divine sentiments, 
echoing and impressing upon you the need, your need of faith this year. Steady faith, stronger faith, no, more, more positive outlook this year in Jesus' name. Forget about what happened in 2014. It is a new year. Have new perspective, new conviction, new goals, and new driver. Be more encouraged in your spirit that this year, this is the voice of God for you to begin the year. Move northward. Begin to make a movement. Don't accept the defeat. Don't allow the devil to dictate to you. Don't stop listening to the, the naysayers, the negative talk. You can't make it, you can't have it, you can't receive it, you can't do this. The point is, what is the reason for they saying that or the devil or people telling you that you can't have it? When God says you can't have it. People listen. Hallelujah. The people here heard a voice that told them the direction they should go. All you need this time is to listen and see God to give you the direction on how you should go. How to approach certain issues that have confronted you, that has impeded progress or hindered you or held you back. Only God has the answer. Seek him and let him answer you. Let him show you. Stop listening to ne negative talk. People will just come to dampen your spirit. Let me tell you, hope will never, ever fail you. Hope does not disappoint. People, hope does not disappoint. Have faith and hope in God. But the point that I'm driving at is this. Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 5, chapter 2, verse 15, when we read, you see, there were people who died as a result of that 38 years journey. Some people died. Not everybody made it. Majority of the people who originally began the journey, they all died. But the point is this. I'm talking to you now. There are people who are stronger than you, more connected than you, come from wealthy homes, people of means, people who are celebrities, people who are, you know, brilliant acad academicians, even excellent people who have attained excellent positions and rank in life. They had it all, but they died. But you, a nobody, a no name, God made you to live. Ask yourself, why is it that all these people died and I made it? The point is this. You made it because God has some unfinished business with you. You are alive because there's something that God wants to accomplish through you. You are alive because God has blessed you to live. You see, the Bible tells us this is how sovereignty operates. When Moses was talking to God in Exodus, chapter 33, and God was sending Moses, Israel has sinned. They have rebelled against God. So God said, no, my presence is not going with you anymore. My presence is not going with you anymore. I'm sending an angel. And then Moses goes and pleads. He said, unless your presence go with me, I'm not going. And then God, say, God relents and he says that I know you by name. I will declare all my goodness to go before you. I will cause my name to go before you. I will cause you to be distinct. And then in verse 19, God said that I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. I will show favor to whom I will show favor. The point is whatever happened in 2014, those who die, those who live, those who didn't make it, nobody can question God because he's the source of all life. He's the source of all goodness. He's the source of all blessings. Everything comes from him. So he made that suffering decision. And it's unquestioned sovereignty for which nobody can question in the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40. He said, who has at any time given anything at all to him? Who has ever been his counselor? Nobody has ever counseled God. So this thing is, some people died, but you, God, made you to survive for a purpose and for a reason. So be thankful and thank God. You made it and you made it for a purpose. You made it for a reason. And that is the reason why you want to pray and to have faith and to seek him and forget about the difficulties of yesteryears 
and believe him for a brighter day, a brighter year, 2015. I hope this message has encouraged you. I hope this message has lifted your spirit. I hope this message has been a blessing unto you. If you are out there, and maybe you are backslidden, you have been complaining, God, I don't know what is going on. God has turned his back on me. And maybe you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Or you are there, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to repeat these words after me. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sins. I am truly, truly sorry. And I beg you, please forgive me. I invite you once more into my life. Become my Lord and Savior. I thank you. With my heart I believe, with my mouth I confess unto salvation that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now may the peace of God be upon you. And I pray for anybody over there who is sick, please put your right hand on any part of your body where the sickness is. And let me pray. And if there's something all over your body, just lift up your right hand. Holy Father God, the Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20, that will send forth your word to heal and to deliver. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, By your stripes we were healed. I pray in the name of Jesus that any sickness, mighty God, that is afflicting your people, I see somebody who is sitting on a bed and the blankets are all over you. You can never get down. I pray let this person receive heal, healing right now. The pain from the waist, mighty God. I see the tailbone is broken. I pray in Jesus' name. The Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will heal this person. Let him get out of that sick bed and begin to walk in Jesus' name. I release freedom. I release healing. I release impartation for restoration in the name of Jesus. May God's will heal you. May the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you and be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for the opportunity given unto us to share and to fellowship in your word. I bless your holy name, bless your people, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next week, I'm Apostle Vincent Acosta of Christ, Citadel International Church. Please call the number on the screen and share your testimony. And this ministry being a blessing, sending your donation to help the ministry as well. God bless you so much and thank you. Until next week, God bless you.